it looks like it clears up at two. We can be there. We can be there any time today. And then if we needed to even change lakes or whatever, um, I mean, we're, we're open. But well, I thought I'd call and let you guys know. We have made it to lovely Southeast Alaska. As you can tell, but this marks the first leg of the journey of me trying to shoot the five deer species in a single season. So we're excited to get hunting. So we just got a phone with the plane company and they're saying the weather's looking pretty nasty. On the app, it looks like two o'clock, it clears up and it's really nice. Like the next four days are honest, we got so lucky and it's amazing. But they're saying if we can't get out today, which is Wednesday, they can't get us out till Saturday, which that is not amazing. That's like two days and it's like beautiful tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. And so we're gonna get everything packed up. We're gonna, they're gonna come pick us up. We're gonna get everything weighed, ready to go. That way, if we get the break, we're gonna be ready to go and we can just throw stuff on and get flown out there. That's the, that's the hope. You know, we were like, this morning we were kind of like, oh, it was just, uh, to the dramatic effect of we might not get out today, but we were kind of like, oh, we'll get out. Now we're kind of like, if we don't get out, we're gonna miss out on two days of hunting and then we fly out. I mean, yeah, so. Fingers crossed for us, guys. Hopefully this rain stops like it's supposed to and we'll be able to get out. It's a really short flight. So we're gonna get to work here and get things packed up. We just got the call we've been waiting on. We actually, we've been sitting in like the hangar all day and uh, they're like, no, it's probably not gonna happen, not gonna happen. We kept looking at our radar and we're like, man, from like two to like six, it looks beautiful. But they kept telling us what was gonna happen. So finally, we were about ready to cancel because we were just gonna go hike somewhere, or get a boat or like figure something out, just have plan B. We kind of had those in place. And then we're like, let's just go for a walk. Cause you can tell it's not raining right now. Super nice. And uh, you can actually look out in the ocean. It looks really nice. And we were about a uh, half mile. They called us and said, hey, you guys might want to get back here. Um, it looks like we're going to have a window if you guys are here. So we're walking our way back. So fingers crossed, guys, it means we'll be yeah. flying up into the Alpine in the next hour. So getting excited. Oh, yeah. We went from like high this morning to a low, Very back low. to high. So yeah. hopefully we're going to stay at this high. Yeah. Well, not super good news, but not terrible news. We have totally changed everything. Uh, we weren't gonna get out on the flights tonight uh, or today. And like I said, they weren't gonna be able to get us out till probably Saturday or Sunday. We fly out next Tuesday. So we have booked a boat. Um, Joe from Decisive Outdoors, he's been like extremely helpful. Like honestly, can't, Joe can't thank you enough. You've been awesome. He pointed us out of some spots where he's seen bucks in the past. And uh, we're gonna go, we took a boat. We're gonna take the boat over there tonight, camp on the beach probably. And then we're gonna start hiking all the way up to the Alpine tomorrow. So we were originally supposed to fly into the Alpine, but now we are taking a boat and we're gonna hiking. So I guess what you do in Alaska, we're just luckily we had a plan B um, as of a few hours ago. And uh, we're gonna go through stuff, get the stuff we need, cause now it's turned into a backpack hunt. And uh, yeah, I don't know, next time you see us, we'll probably be loading up a boat. Welcome to the jungle. We are dropped off, so we're we're here. This is home for the night, and then we're gonna bust our butts all the way up to the top to the Alpine. Yeah, this is crazy jungle. Selling Ross, like no matter where you hunt, there's always some stuff to it. 
but it's just cool to experience something new like this. Pretty excited. Look at this. We are currently looking for a spot to set up a tent for our base camp. Like I said, it's about, what time is it? 6.15 time up here, so we've got a couple hours, but we've got a lot of stuff to get. Like, we spent all day at the hangar and we should have been getting stuff ready, but we, we were hoping we were flying. But there's water absolutely everywhere here. So we're just gonna try and find a spot and get all our gear kind of shuttled up and get a spot where we can hang it up in trees because there's a lot of brown bears. That was gonna be the nice thing about flying in is we wouldn't have to worry as much about brown bear. But now we're gonna be hiking through the nasty. So it's an adventure. Our makeshift camp is set up. I did a time lapse of my phone and it said it was all out of storage, so that sucks, so we'll get that figured out. But it's not raining. It's dripping a lot, but it's not raining. And uh, we're just gonna get things kind of geared up for tomorrow because it's gonna be a nasty 2,000 foot climb straight up. We are signing out for the night. It's about, it's only 8.13 local time. That's 10.13 our home back home and we're gonna be waking up early and we've got a big day tomorrow. So we got a little something to eat, watch the tide go out. Honestly, Alaska's pretty dang amazing. We survived our first night in the Alaska wilderness. I don't know if this is really wilderness, but we didn't get ate by a bear. That yeah. was the good thing. Um, we got dripped on all night. It didn't rain though, but it's been dripping. But we're gonna get things packed up and uh, start making our way up to the top. But I don't know. it's a little different because every time I woke up, I was listening for bears. I mean, we don't. I mean, we know there's brown bears here. We didn't see any sign, but I don't know. We're gonna get ready and uh, get up to the alpine. We've got packs all loaded up, ready to go. Now we just need to get our dry bag with all our extra stuff. I'm gonna put it up in a tree. So hopefully nothing gets into it. So, feels good. We're finally about ready to start heading up the mountain. And it's like hot and muggy. You have to wear a rain jacket so you don't get soaked. I was telling Tyler this morning, I wish we had a rain shirt. Someone should invent that. You ready? Yeah, ready. We got our packs loaded up. They weigh probably, I don't know, what would you say? 40, 50 pounds? 150 mine. 150, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're super excited. We got the stuff hung up, so if anything tries to mess with it, it's gonna be a little bit tougher. But the weather's awesome. I think it's gonna be worth it once we get up there. It's just kind of a grind to get there. So, pretty excited. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna look like drowned rats by the time we get up there. That's my hypothesis. And it's only what two miles to where we want to go. Yeah. And it could take us could take us all day. Two thousand feet. Yeah, over two thousand up to the where we actually want to go. Yeah. But away we go. Looking at base map here. We're trying to get into a cut. I think is probably like a, I don't know, avalanche, avalanche probably. But it should have cleared this route all the way to the top. So rather than bushwhacking, we can go through this cut. And I think we're right there. So should be uh, sm smoother sailing from here. I don't know if it's gonna be smooth sailing though. We found the wash and if it stays like this all the way to the top, we'll be golden. But we'll see. You can tell a lot of this is sweat, a lot of it's water. So 
At least now, I'm not going to have to worry about water. Well, the easy part's over, it looks like. Now, we're gonna have to go up there, cross that, kind of like cliff face, up, zigzag. So, it looks like it's easy, otherwise we're gonna have to go through all this brush and crap, so. That is what we're gonna try to do. Yeah, they got their gill net down there. Like six or seven feet down in the water and they do a big, big circle with the gill net. And it looks like they're not catching anything, so. <laughs> What's that on the other side of that? I think something's swimming. Oh yeah. To the left? Whale. No, just kidding. Is it nothing? It's nothing. Seen some deer tracks finally. So maybe we're getting into the area that they need to be in. So we just gotta go up probably another thousand feet. And then I think we'll be in the Alpine where we can drop our camp and uh, start looking for some deer. We're hoping that those bucks are just hanging out in that Alpine and, and uh, we can go up there and get a buck down at least, at least one today, hopefully. We've only got about 430 yards to the Alpine, and uh, but one thing we haven't addressed is look at this weather we've got. Like honestly, I don't think this happens in Alaska very often, um, especially in Southeast Alaska. We've got absolutely gorgeous weather. We just looked at the, the weather update, and it's supposed to be clear for till like Tuesday. Today's Thursday, so uh, our plan is to stay two, three nights up here. And hopefully we were gonna maybe shoot three bucks, but now we're kind of like, we might just shoot because I got I bought an extra tag when we thought we were flying in because I would just shoot the first one because with the icon two or the deer species when I want to shoot all five in one season, so I'll get one shot and then hunt for a bigger one. But now that we're in here, we're kind of we don't know if we can get three deer out of here. We can get two, we can make it work, but three would be pretty tough. So and if that was the case, we'd go hunt somewhere else maybe closer. Um, but yeah. It's pretty amazing, guys. It's pretty cool. First time I've ever been in Alaska. So, we're pretty excited. We just checked base map, and we are at the end of our slide. So that means now we've got to go bushwhacking through all this crazy stuff. The slide was nice. I mean, there's a lot of cliffs and some sketchy stuff we had to go up, but... It wasn't brushy. Now, it's time to go through the brush.
and things can be pretty tough to make it down. I feel like coming up is hard enough. I just don't think we're gonna be able to go down the same way. Not with loaded packs. Yeah. So we're gonna have to find a ridge or something to get out of here. Uh, and we're gonna have deer on our backs, so it's gonna be a little rough, but it's a worry for another day. We've pretty much been on hands and knees, grabbing brush and pulling ourselves up. Camera's not gonna show that it looks that bad, but it is. It's crazy. I said going up is not terrible, but coming down, I feel like we'd have to like lower our packs the entire way down. So, like Ty said, it's a worry for another day. We gotta go get bucks killed first. We finally broke out into some alpine. I won't say all the way because it's still up there a ways, but we might look around. I mean, there's some pretty flat spots right here. We might try to set up our tent and that way we're kind of out of where they could be. But finally, I mean, five and a half hours later, we're up to the alpine. And it was probably the most brutal hike I think I've ever done. How about you? Oh, it, it was the most brutal hike. It was crazy, guys. Like, I wish, I kind of wish we would have waited for the for the plane. <laughs> the honest truth. But we're up here now. Now we got to figure out. We're gonna probably gonna try to plan the route back down for when we do go back down. We just dropped everything that we don't really need and we're going to hike up on top here to uh, see if we can find a deer. We've been kind of glass and the cool thing about this spot, I mean it's super flat, we found out everything wet so luckily we have an extra tarp we'll probably put underneath. Um, but we could glass back that way, we glass this way. There's one little knob up behind us about 300 yards, probably less. We're going to sneak up there and see if there's any deer hiding in the basin and then probably we'll probably be out for the rest of the night. Just keep moving and working over every little ridge, but it feels good that we can actually see stuff. And like this country is a little more what we're used to. Like we can handle this. We're not gonna be busting through the brush and straight up and down. So it's pretty amazing. Just spotted the first deer of the trip. Unfortunately, it's a long ways off. But we're gonna get the spotting scope out and the phone scope and uh, take a look at our first ever Sitka blacktail deer. Just spotted the second deer. It's a lot closer, but it looks like it's just like a little spike or so. Really couldn't get that great of phone scope footage of him before he got under the trees, but at least we're seeing deer. It was worth the hike up here at least to finally see some deer. But it's crazy cool country, like honestly. It's crazy that that deer is just. So far, we've seen seven deer. The one two-point buck, a um, little spike over here, a little button buck, and then one more little spike, and then the rest have been does. So, but it's 344, so they're just starting to kind of come out right now in little breaks. So, we might move over to this next ridge over here to where we can kind of look in this basin back over here. But, feels good to be up in the Alpine. <clears throat> so, we have officially passed our first buck about that big 180 yards so I think we're it's still like four and a half hours till sunset we're just gonna hang out here I think and keep watching because maybe these little bucks are feeding up and the bear ones just wait so I think we're in a pretty good little this is just a big saddle up behind us there's another little drainage over here so it's pretty awesome We are 
we're making our way to the next ridge. And we've seen a couple toes down below us. So we're gonna have to move really slow. But uh, we sat on this one knob for a long time. We saw a lot of deer, but they're just really far away. So we're gonna move to where we can get a little closer. That way we can get to make something happen tonight if we get one close enough. We've got quite a few deer in this basin behind us over here. A couple decent fork and horn bucks, which what we've been told is that's a decent buck if we're a sick of blacktail. Um, they're down there about 400, I mean, we could shoot right here, but it's getting, I mean, we've only got not a lot of light left. And uh, for right now, we're just gonna kinda keep tabs of what all we can find. But this basin back over here behind me where you see Tyler is. It looks incredible, and there's does. We've seen a ton of does and fawns. We've only seen a handful of bucks. And that, that, that very first buck we saw was the best one so far. So, we're just gonna keep after it and see what we can find. Right down here in this basin, we see two little two-point bucks. I mean, they're kind of decent for, for the bucks we're seeing. They've been fighting here for a little while, and then uh, about another six seven hundred yards we see a uh, velvet buck so these two that were fighting were, all, were both hard horn but the velvet buck looks pretty nice gets the gets the heart pumping a little bit more so but it's also a lot further away but uh pretty cool to see some bucks here out there so i think there's got to be some more you would think These two fork and the horns have been fighting. They've kind of worked their way a little closer to us. We're gonna sneak down this hill, see if we can get comfortable enough for a shot. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna see. If we feel confident, we can, I mean, they're close up now. I think we'll just have, we just drop all our stuff and drop straight down and uh, get them packed back up here. We're getting them taken care of and hung up down there. Let me get down here a little closer. Oh, hi. A little high. Actually, you might. He's hit. He's hit. He's hit. He's done. He's done. Maybe. That steep angle, you hit him kind of in the back, came out the bottom of him. He's going to die right there. We have got a buck down. We watched these two, those two hard horned bucks that were fighting. They ended up coming into about 369 yards. And uh, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush is what they say, right? This basin is absolutely incredible. They say Alaska, you never know what the weather's gonna do. And uh, shot, and it blew right through him and like splattered water up behind him. So it looked like it hit high and he went around. I might've hit him on a touchback, but we watched him die right behind a clump of trees. And uh, this is number one a five this year. The five deer species sick of blacktail. It's August 18th, earliest they've ever killed anything with a rifle, um, even with a bow. It's surreal. This has been one heck of a day. We literally killed ourselves hiking up here. We've seen a ton of deer. This is a pretty good fork and horn. Everyone we've talked to said a fork and horn is a good buck. And uh, it was too hard to pass up that opportunity first ever animal with the Sig Sauer Cross, the Hunter Games Edition, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and uh, felt really good on the shot, and it, we saw it, we saw it die, so honestly, crazy. There's another fork and horn that was fighting down there, 
We've been trying to decide if Tyler might want to shoot it or not. But we're trying to decide if we want to just go down there and get this deer and bring it back up here. Or if we might go down this big draw. Instead of going the way we came, we're at a state of unknowns right now. But we're going to get things packed up here and at least start making our way back down to this deer. And, uh, and then we'll decide from there. But pretty incredible, guys. Sick of blacktail, 369 yards. First day we've actually been hunting, like I said, this alpine. Absolutely incredible.